Glory to God. Now we're dealing with seven anointings to increase after the Lord makes you extremely rich. Seven anointings that you increase after the Lord makes you extremely rich. You know, because the Holy Spirit is a master observer. observer. He's always looking at you. And the truth of the matter is there are times that the Lord looks at you more and he stares at you and studies you even more deeper than others. Because he sees everyone. But there's times when there's certain people that are of a certain rank in his eyes that he look at you even deeper, even stronger. And one of those places is when he makes you rich. He makes you a rule over much. Because there's a reason why he made you a rule over much. Because you was faithful. He, remember. How could he make you a rule over much. If he wasn't studying your faithfulness. Think about that. So he had to do an evaluation looking at you. You see what I'm saying. So what I'm saying to you is actually marvelous. Like when you think about it as a marvelous concept. Because you look at things from a different angle. How could he actually give you more abundance because you've been faithful if he wasn't studying how you were being faithful? What you were doing in that area of faithfulness. So obviously he was studying you and looking at you for him to be able to reward you according to your deeds. Now, the Lord does not make people rich because he loves them. He makes people rich because they're following the laws for the riches. That's why a man can tell you, I love the Lord. A woman can tell you, I love the Lord. I've been serving God for years. They may not ever step into $100,000. They may not step into $500,000. They may not never see a million dollars. Now, you may look at that person and you may say, well, God does not have that for everybody. Some people he doesn't have that for. No, that's a lie. It's just less light on that woman. And it's less light on that man. If they never achieve it in their lifetime. See, you know everything, but you don't know that you know everything. There are certain dimensions of light that is hidden when you inquire of God for wisdom. That he will not share it with you or give you understanding of it unless you ask him for it. That's why I say asking you shall receive. Asking is so important. If you don't ask God for certain things, he's not going to give it to you even though it belongs to you. And one of those things is wisdom. Wisdom does not come by, by default. So someone would say, hey, I have wisdom, right? I have wisdom. The wisdom of God is inside of me because I'm born again. No, the wisdom of God is inside of you because simply you have made in your mind to ask God for wisdom. When you ask God for wisdom, he gives you wisdom. Imagine how many things in your life God is letting you be stupid about because you're not asking him for wisdom. Think about that. And I want to tell you as a wise king that the Lord will actually make, let you make dumb decisions all your life, even though he loves you, because he will not violate your will. Your will is the part of you. It's a God realm of you where you can pick what you're going to do, what you're going to think. Do you know that nobody is determining your thoughts but you? And your thoughts are predicated upon the information you have. Did you know that? A man can't be a homosexual unless he looks and sees and has knowledge of other men. How are you going to be a homosexual if you don't even have knowledge of other men? Homosexuality is the knowledge of other men. It's information already inside. Your temptations is connected to the information you have. You can't be tempted by something you don't like. And somebody come up to me and say, you want to try this crack? Yeah, I'm not tempted. 
Because according to me, even though I know about crack, I don't have knowledge about the crack. There's no information that I have about the crack. Now, there's other cracks that people will offer you too. <laughs> and we're not going to speak about that. Don't interrupt my broadcast now. Let me keep on teaching. Let me keep on teaching. Give me five more minutes. Give me five more minutes. Don't, 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 inter don't interrupt my teaching. But you can't even be tempted by something that you have not um, already indulged in. So people don't get tempted in depression. They have experienced depression. That's why in the future when they're walking with God, depression spirits can try to overtake them. And so the Lord is an observer. He watches you very closely, seeing how you handle yourself before he makes you wealthy. Because there's a list of requirements that are in the wealth. The more he gives you, the more he wants from you. And when I say more he wants from you, you can't be somebody that's scattered. See, the reason why I teach you about having a plantation, being still, why, why I'm not a wayward individual, because before I got to here, you have to master these things before the Lord will even let you come here. And I'm talking about divinely. Me and you both know that people can become rich according to the natural, through wickedness. So I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about riches that come from the Father, the empowerment of the Spirit of the Lord that giveth unto you wealth. See, the Holy Spirit giveth divine money, divine finances. It's holy. It has an agenda from heaven and a mission from God. When you are purely rich, you're rich because of purity, because of honor, humility. Those divine finances come with a judgment. So the Lord going to judge you with the wealth to see how you handle it. Hereby, you understand why I always boast in the Lord and tell you how I sow all the time. Because wealth is a judgment. Seven anointings that you must keep after the Lord makes you physically rich is that don't lose your work ethic. Some of you have been following me for years. It don't matter how much the Lord gives me, I keep on working heavy has something I wanted to show. I keep on working heavy. It doesn't matter what the father gives to me. I won't sit down and say, I arrived. No, 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 because that's deceptive. After the Lord gives you plenty, your work ethic has to go to the next degree if you sincere. If it dies off, that means that you just wanted the money. And that is a Judas dimension. And that is scary. One of the anointings that you must not lose is diligence. And that's in alongside of work ethic. Work ethic is really diligence manifested. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Glory to God. Diligence is work ethic. And work ethic is diligence. See, a preacher will be disrespected by the world. According to the world, our job is not a job, but we have the highest job in the land, higher than president. We are presidents. That's why it says, make your election sure. Election, e ele ele election. Because we are presidents. We are governors. We have the highest job in the land. Because we work in the spirit. And we're delivering mankind from eternal hell. But see, a prophet, 
a preacher is not respected by the world. That's why I say, Marvin, not the world hates you. The world does not consider a prophet a job. They consider a psychic a job with their broke self. But a prophet, the world, they don't have the ability, the anointing to detect the work description of a divine officer. So there's a work ethic that comes alongside after the Lord makes you rich. And you're going to have to keep your diligence. Some people get rich and think that it's time to rest, take a vacation. They forget their assignment. Your assignment never dies. I'm going to be doing the same thing in all eternity. You know why? Because there's going to be people there without crowns. I saw somebody enter into heaven in the last three hours. I saw them enter into heaven with a gown of salvation. The Lord said they don't have a robe, they have a gown. The reason why they have a gown, they have to work their way up to the robe. I saw that in the last three hours. The gown of salvation. God will give that to you if you make it to heaven. And you don't got much, much fruit. But you got some fruit. He'll give you a gown. The robe, you got to work your way up in heaven. There's teachers in heaven. Apostle Paul is still teaching today. Apostle Paul, short, stumpy man. <laughs> I'm shocked that God didn't give him no height in heaven. But I find out that's his significance. Because <laughs> ain't no woman can beat him down up there. The woman will bully you down here. They'll beat you over your head when you're talking to them because they're six feet tall. Megan the Stallion looking chicks. Bow! They'll knock you on top of you. Ow! Hey, hey, I I'm the provider. And they'll knock you on the top of your head. They'll beat you down with the fist. She. Ain't no woman can beat him down up there. That's why Apostle Paul talking about he went. He tried to talk about marriage in the text, but he wasn't getting no legs. Pastor Paul, you can't deal with matters like these. <laughs> Townsend, I don't think that is good for you to burn. Well, you, you, you taught us that you was burning when you will to do good. Evil be present. Then you talking about you beating your flesh into subjection. <laughs> don't be talking about these matters. <laughs> and saints, do you understand that the heavenly hosts when 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 they when they when they know that there's a king on earth there's somebody operating as god in the earth they find great joy in the operation of that person so you know how i'm talking like this like apostle paul not mad apostle paul remember everybody in heaven are they they perfect in the spirit they in love so what happens is they look at things from God's point of view. They know spirit to spirit. See, it's the flesh that begin offended. You see what I'm saying? Your work ethic, your diligence has to multiply as the Lord is multiplying you. As the Lord is multiplying you, don't stop multiplying in fruits. Your work ethic, your diligence has to keep on going up the ladder. Don't stop just because you think that you get enough. All right? Don't stop till you get enough. Don't do that either. <laughs> keep on going in your work ethic and your diligence because the Lord is watching you. The more he gives you, the more he's actually stalking you. You see what I'm saying? Because he's saying, what will you do? And see, the Lord will judge you. Like, for instance, if the Lord give you a vehicle and you start driving his enemies around, he going to judge you for doing that. Because he was stalking you when he gave you the vehicle. So when you let evil presence in the vehicle, he write that down. And then he penalize you. He punishes you. If the Lord gives you anything and you let an evil person occupy it, he going to truck you up real good. 
to teach you a lesson. All right? So if the Lord gives you a dress and somebody say, let me borrow your dress. I'm going to an event. You go give them the dress to borrow it. You go take it back. You put it inside your, your, your thing. When you do that, he going to truck you up real good. Um, some of you all need to understand this, that the Lord doesn't fight people immediately. How He, he move at his own time. You're going to see that in America. You're going to see that in the United States. You're going to see that all over the earth. He move in his own time. Nobody pits their time on him. I don't know if some of you all ever noticed. Have you seen how I do my conferences? I come at my own time. Because when I come, I'm going to be moving. You understand? I'm not coming for a spectacle. I'm not coming to have a debate or a conversation. I'm coming to swing stuff around. <laughs> I'm coming to shift stuff. So, so I, I'm not coming just for you to see me. <laughs> That's why I don't, I, 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 can't do, I can't do services like everybody. Because I'm not going to have a service and just talk with you. I'm, I'm coming to destroy an altar that you don't know about. I'm coming into that building to introduce you to angels that you need for the next six years. You see what I'm saying? So the agenda is not just a meter. The, the agenda is a calling, a crown, an assignment. And that's how God moves. So a lot of times while you're praying and seeking God, the Lord don't move yet. When he's ready to move, he moves. And that's the opportune time where things will obviously shift and you'll see rejoicing. You'll see favor. Now, that's another dimension that every child of God must learn to love about the father. Don't let that become an irritation to you. See, some of you are, your life is not going at the pace of what you think it should be going. The spirit will start showing you. And um, the wisdom that I want you to un understand as well, you don't want to make dumb decisions because when you make dumb decisions, you take years off of the movement of God. So God will have you wait a year, two years, three years. And I ain't got time for that. A part of my excellency was, was burdened with my hatred for waiting. I have a boss mind. I have a king mind. When I want something, I want it now. But I'm not a thief. Because if I have that mindset and I don't want to put the diligence in, then I become what you call a con man, a crook. You have an expectation that your conduct is not matching. That's a bipolarism in the spirit. It's an imbalance. And so King Jesus moved the same way on earth. He wanted the manifestations to occur. He didn't have no time to say, Father, they need water turned into wine or he turned the water into wine because his mentality was in the right place for immediate results. Avoid dumb decisions. You'll set your life back. Your life becomes slow when you're around slow people. If you have anybody in your life that's slow, just remember your life going to go at the pace of them. There's no getting out of it either. If you got a slow person you're doing business with, that's the pace that your business going to go. So you can cry out and say, Lord, I want my business to go fast. No, your business going to go at the pace of your partner. Those are the laws of association. See, bad company not only corrupts good character, it, it corrupts good seasons. Bad company. Because the Lord not going to do something for you 
if somebody going to receive the benefits of it and they don't qualify for what you're receiving. You see what I'm saying? Because the Lord know that they're going to indulge in it. So some of you are asking God for a house. Who going to come inside the house? Who go, who going to step foot in the house? And then let me ask you again. Do you want a house? What activities are going to go on in that house? Is the spirit going to rule that house? Because the given much is the required much. And see, perspective and decision making blocks wealth. Ratchetness stops riches. Ratchetness. When you're rigged. When you're rugged. When you're ratchet. It stops riches. You may get a house and God may tell you, I don't want your mama ever to go be over there. You may get a house, God may tell you, I don't want none of your children over there. You say, shot, oh. I don't want your children. Wait, God would say that? Uh, you're going to have to spell it out. It, it, God means that somebody that's worship. His job is not to worship you. He does it out, out of mercy. But he's the God. <laughs> that's just his loving kindness. He, he bend himself and, and, and make you feel accommodated, but he's the God. He, he not subject to what you subject to. If God can't rule who comes into the house, stop believing for it. Because when you get a house, you gonna receive house instructions. When you receive a car, you're going to receive car instructions. And some of you all don't understand that the car that you currently have is a judgment. Because how did you deal with the car that you currently have? Who entered inside of that car? Were you a steward over that vehicle? Who drove it? Who sat in the passenger seat? Who sat in the back seat? Because if you fell in with the car that you currently have, what you think going to happen when God give you the car that you really supposed to have? You're going to die in that car. Because God don't just give you stuff and not judge you. He examine you. And if he feel disrespected, he going to pop off. Keep your work ethic and your diligence. The more the Lord gives you, don't let him see you slacking off. The more he pits in your hands, don't let him have to cry out to you. Just be attentive and love his voice. Love his instructions. Love opportunities. And don't let the serpent deceive you to become aggravated with seasons that are actually a divine payment that you're giving back unto God of your work ethic. Sometimes you rob God because you pray so hastily about moving from something that's actually a blessing to him. Sometimes your cross is bringing pleasure to the Father. No, no, not sometimes. Your cross brings pleasure to the Father. When you're carrying your cross, you're carrying a place of dying to you so that he can live 
and that brings him joy. Don't lose your work ethic. When the father blesses you with riches, don't lose your work ethic and don't die off in your productivity. Don't take vacations in the spirit because a lot of people do. Hezekiah and the word of God took vacations in the spirit. And as, a, as long as he took those vacations, he ended up becoming more wicked and more wicked and more wicked. Saints, it don't matter how much money the Lord gives me, I'm a praying man. And I don't, I don't pray for the public. I don't do prayer meetings. Because the minute that too much people see you operating in certain operations, the less sincerity it has. When people see you fasting, praying, doing all that stuff, you lose the purity. You lose the God consciousness of it. Now you become conscious of people telling you. You're going to see people all over Facebook talking about I'm on day three of my fast. I'm on day six of my fast. Baby, pit that she down. Pit it down. Because God ain't recognizing it. Too much flesh. You're supposed to be fat. Fasting is like sex to God. It's like you having sex with God. It, you, you birth in something, you have an intimacy, and he transferring his DNA to you. How are you telling everybody, oh, I'm having sex with God? Me and him is intimate. What is you doing? The Lord don't want his sex life public. He don't want his intimacy with you public. That's something that's between you and him. He said, when you fast, wash your face. Stop looking like you going through something. Anoint your face. Look, look good. But you know what our generation do? Every time they go on a fast, you know, I just finished my fast. I want to thank the Lord for helping me finish my fast. The Lord said that when people pray, they go on the street corners and they pray out aloud. Don't lose your diligence in your, in, in, in your fire. Stay on fire the more the Lord gives you. The more you see riches come into your hands, wealth come into your hands, prosperity come into your hands. Keep on going forward in your diligence. Don't let the Lord see you slacking because he's going to make you rich. He, he, the Lord actually, he, it burns him up when he can't make you rich because Saints, it's like me having a buffet and I'm seeing people around me and I say, you want some? And they not ready to receive the buffet. That not bringing me no pleasure. In, the, in my mind, I'm suffering. See, the Lord suffered to see you in lack. The Lord suffered to see you in poverty. See, that's his suffering. When you begging the Lord for a financial miracle, he's suffering in his mind. Because truth be told, you was created to be given financial miracles to other people, not being the recipient of it. Stay on fire. Stay on, 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 on a hot plate. <laughs> Stay hot. And you can't do things to be seen by people because it's going to die off. You can't do things because of people because they'll die off. Because people die off. Those who praise you today may not praise you tomorrow. So what you going to do? You going to stop going forth? You have to build that soldier in you today. Build, you caught that there? Build the soldier in you today. Because tomorrow, when the soldier is being tampered with, you can't leave the war, the battle, the crown, the inauguration. You got to keep on going forth to the next crown. David did not stop dancing. 
when Mikhail cursed him. Noah did not stop preaching when the generation laughed at him. You got to keep going forward. As long as you keep on looking at what other people are doing around you, you become more wicked. That's why I even told you all, stop looking at people in this ministry. They're not sent to you. The more you look at them, when they fall off, you're going to fall off right with them. Take your eyes off people, every man for their self. This is a straight and narrow path. You're going to see other people there, but you on a straight and narrow path. That's how you guard yourself. Saints, when I started sowing, the other young preachers wasn't no sower. They didn't have the mentality like me. They had their other interests. They had their other stuff that they loved doing. They wasn't on the same mind as me. And I sanctified myself from them. I didn't have to slander them. I didn't have to do no preaching about them. I didn't have to do no video on them to knock down their character. I know who you is. That's all that matters. I, there's no reason for me to fight you. But I'm going to go forth in my divine principles. You can't look for a teammate. Look for a dream mate. Because even some people are part of your team that's not a part of your dream. <laughs> that's good, boy. <laughs> that's good, boy. <laughs> Y'all want to sit right there and rob me. You want to act like I ain't saying nothing. Man, man, come on, man. You want to sit right there with me. You want to sit right there. You want to sit right there. You want to act like you want to act like that went hot. Huh? Huh? Because Scottie Pippen can be on the team and still not be a part of the dream. Because Scottie Pippen want to wear dresses. <laughs> Scottie Pippen want to put on makeup. He want to put on lipstick. Scottie Pippen want to mess around and get married to Madonna and all of that. Huh? Huh? I met Dennis Rodman. Dog on it. <laughs> Bless him be God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> I just caught it, man. Blessed be, blessed be God. God, nose ringing his nose. Dear son, please, I don't want none of my sons with no nose ringing. Please. I, if any of my sons, if you got piercing, please, please, baby, please, 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 baby boy, please, baby boy. Please, please, please. Dennis Rodman pit that pit that nose ring inside his nose. Plank. Pit it right there. And what's up there, Thompson? Man, Dennis Rodman's still a character today. It <laughs> saints, we on it. Never mind. Nah, I can't say that because they'll create visuals in your head. I'm not gonna do that to you. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> glory to God. Glory to God. Financial blessings produce financial testings, mental testings, association testings. And the more the Lord gives you, the more the Lord going to watch you. He going to look at you very closely to see if you're pleasing to him. Saints, promotion is very dangerous. Because if, if promotion exposes that you don't have the qualities of the promotion manifesting through you. Now, mind you, promotion is evidence that you have the qualities. But the testing during promotion is to examine if you're using the qualities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a promotion is a revelation that you have the qualities that God loves. But the testing is an examination of 
whether you're using it or not. So you have an advantage in this teaching because what you're going to become a user of the data. See, you got some apps inside of you that came from God that you're not using. Oh, my goodness. The apps is in your spiritual phone, is in your spirit, and it's there, but you, you haven't used it. You, you haven't saw any need for it. You probably got an app of adaptation, an app of correction that you think I don't need to be corrected. So you never open the app. But the app is a part of the pleasure of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have the app of rebuke. You say, I don't need to be rebuked. Right? But, but that app is pleasurable to God. You see what I'm saying? You may have the app of consistency. You know, I'm faithful. I don't need nobody to tell me about consistency. I does it. I'm a boss. I do it. Yeah, yeah, but that app is pleasurable to God. See, that's 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 an app investigation that God going to give to you. Huh? And see, when the Lord is investigating how well your apps are moving and he see that some of the apps are no longer even updated. <laughs> it's not even up to date no more. Like you still praising like you in 1997. You, you still uh, focusing like you still in 1995, like you still in 2005. And the apps not even updated. And every time the spirit done came to you and told you to update it, you keep on blocking it off. Now, I don't need to update it. I don't want that to update. I don't want that update. The Lord going to look at you closely. He going to do an autopsy to see how the body of Christ is working for you. Uh, and what has killed you or what has built you to the next dimension of being the body of Christ. He going to do an autopsy on what's in you. He going to look at your spiritual organs, the organ of praise, the organ of faith, the organ of joy. The organ of willingness. He's going to do a spiritual autopsy. And when he looks at himself, he should see his image at work. He should see that your, your, your body has been quickened by the spirit. Huh? He's going to look at you closely the more he gives you. And saints, sometimes. Well, let me not say sometimes. It's always good if God has placed you at a certain financial level because the next financial level going to produce judgment and it won't end off too well. Let me say this to you. Ananias and Sapphira, they've been in that church, but they had just got large money. The large money had a greater judgment on it. You see what I'm saying? They was in the church all them weeks, all them months. They was right there. And they knew how to tithe. They knew how to give. That's why Peter said, why have you let Satan fill your heart? That means that Satan did not fill their heart three weeks ago. They let Satan fill it because they got to the next level of finances and tried to do the same level that they used to operate in. And God said, no, you robbed me. No, you were supposed to go up when I went up. You trying to stay at the same place after I don't went up. And that's robbery to me. So God clapped back in a murder. You see what I'm saying? They didn't see that the higher money was a higher judgment. When the Lord is making you richer, He's also making you more obedient to greater responsibilities. If you don't take that greater obedience to responsibilities, you rob God. You got to keep your work at ethic, which is really diligence. Diligence matters because diligence means that I'm unwilling to let Satan instigate 
the promotion that God has given to me. Diligence is retaliation against weariness. Diligence is you guarding yourself fully and not letting the blessing produce drunkenness in the natural. Because when God blessing you, it's going to make you drunk. But that natural drunkenness is taking you out of your spiritual diligence. Like see saints right now, if I'm a natural man, I could be doing something else right now. As a matter of fact, my sons would tell you that sometimes I'm planning to do something that's fun. And then I spend all the time on here with you. So imagine if you listen to my teachings and you are loose cannon. My diligence judges you. Because God's saying how you hanging around everybody and he can hang around who he wants. People won't hang around him, but he is disciplining himself for you. And you up there chilling and, and telling son, I'm hanging and this my cousin, this my this my family. And you up there acting like like you you no no my diligence is judging you. Because when I could be doing that, I'm here for you. Your man of God's diligence judges your level of diligence. Because God's saying, how come he got the power? And, and, and some of y'all, I'm way younger than y'all. Saints, some of y'all are way older than me. You know what God did? God saw you being stupid. You know what he did? God dang. Let me let me come down. Let me take on a body. I know that they about 50, 40 years old. By the time he get there, they're going to be 70. By the time he get into his office, they're going to be about 40 and 30. But die dog. I know this is going to be stupid. And God, you don't understand. God suited up and came down. To rescue you. <laughs> so you look at me, you say, you say, well, he 20, you know, I'm 50, I'm 40. I'm, how he younger than me. And, and uh, baby, I'm not younger than you. This body younger than you. I'm an eternal God, an eternal spirit. I'm just in a young body. This body is not me. I'm talking to you out of a young flesh. I'm not this young flesh. I come to... I, I didn't want to be in no cool Joe looking body. <laughs> I came down in a young body. Because I'm a young God. That's why I come even to make you young. It don't matter how old you get. You going in reverse. Because I'm a young God. They portrayed me like I was old. I don't get old. I'm ancient. Ancient is not oldness. Ancient is experience. It's professionalism. It means that I'm in mastery of what I do. I don't get old. Everybody in heaven is young. Everybody in paradise is young. Everybody in eternal life is young. And when you leave this body, you're going to experience the other body that I have. It can't get old. The other body I have can't gain weight. You're going to eat fish with me. You're going to eat fries with me. You're going to eat meat with me. You're going to drink with me. And nothing that you have will ever deteriorate. 
There's no sickness where I am. There's no diseases where I am. Diseases is a curse, is a consequence. There are some diseases and some sicknesses that I use as a cross to break the sin nature in a person. But you're going to be able to eat and drink with me and there'll be no sin. There'll be no evil. There'll be no interruption. There'll be no serpent in my gardens. There will be many garden of Edens for all eternity that I will plant male and female in. And there'll be no serpent. And I'll do my plan over and over and over again. And don't think for one minute just because you think that there's a second heaven and a second earth. There's more heavens and new earth that I will do in the ages to come. Life will keep on restarting and starting up and continuing and going. And eternity will have more eternity to it. And it'll become more eternal and more eternal. And you'll keep on going into the galaxies of my pleasures. Nothing will ever stop with me. I'm coming to train you now to show you how to continue in all eternity with me now. I'm not going to train you in heaven. I'm training you right now so that you can make it to heaven. And you're not coming to heaven just because of me. You come into heaven because you decided to listen to the training that me is giving you. I put your eternal destiny in your power, in your authority, in your dominion. But I done paved the way. No demon can stop you from getting to me in eternal life. No demon can stop you from living in every paradise that I have for you. No demon can stop you from seeing my father's house where there's many mansions. All you have to do is listen to me talking to you in this life because I'm preparing you for what's to come. And all the chaos that you see in your land, I laugh at some of the chaos, chaos and I laugh at some of the fools that's behind the chaos. And I laugh at the crooks that instigate the chaos because their time is shorter than they know. The systems of this world shall fall. The kingdoms of this world shall fall. They all shall become my kingdom anyhow. So I laugh. There's nothing on your earth that trembles me. Nothing on your earth causes me to have an anxiety attack. I don't get worried. I don't faint. I don't get weary. I don't get afraid. I don't have any nervous bone in my body, says the Lord. I don't know what nervousness is. I have never been nervous. I wasn't nervous when I created the first man. I wasn't nervous when I had my family in eternity. I wasn't nervous when my family turned against me. And I'm not nervous today. And I don't get nervous. When you get nervous, I look at you with a side eye. Because that's not of me. That's not my image, nor will it ever be my image. I'm not a nervous God, nor am I operating through a nervous people. My plan will reign supreme no matter what you see or no matter what you hear. I laugh at your Congress on earth. <laughs> ha ha ha. I laugh at your congressmen and your senators. <laughs> because Michael and Gabriel are part of my senators. I have senators elects that been with me. They were a part of my ejection of Lucifer. They were a part of my ejection of the one third of the angels. I have senators, I have God beings that I made in my image and likeness that sprung forth from the breath of my mouth. I'm the almighty. They sprung forth from me. And they carry my same like authority. Ha ha ha. What do you think happened when I sent one of my senators to speak to Abraham when he was about to slaughter his firstborn son. You ever wonder why I never acknowledge Ishmael? Because Ishmael wasn't in my plan. I don't acknowledge what I don't plan. I don't acknowledge a lot of stuff going on in your nation, nor 
the nations of this world. Because if it's not my plan, I don't endorse it. But my plan shall be fulfilled, nevertheless, says the Lord. For there's too many blood of the prophets crying out. Beneath the altar in heaven. Justice shall reign in your generation. Though great wickedness has arrived and great wickedness has plundered. Great righteousness will prevail. And I say unto those of you all that belong to me that have my seal on your forehead. That vengeance is mine and I will repay. <laughs> vengeance is mine and I will repay. From the four winds of the earth and from the four corners of the earth. Vengeance is mine and I will repay. And I shall shake the nations and I shall earthquake the nations with my vengeance. Hold fast and you'll see the salvation of the Lord. And you, my people, at which I'm at work in your life, stop corrupting my works. Stop corrupting my surgeries, my operations, my mindsets, my goals, my desires and my preferences stop hindering me. Yea, the Lord shall say unto you, stop blocking my hand from touching where I want to touch. Stop blocking my mouth from confessing what I want to confess. I am your God and besides me there is no other. If you search every region where life exists, there's no God like me. My extended hand unto you is for a time. If you cut off my extended hand, it will be as you wish. I won't keep on recreating an extended hand. I'll give you your wishes. Acts of me and the generations before thee. I did the same thing with them. I give even generations that reject my extended arm. I give them the desires of their heart. But you are a chosen people. I deem you as wise. I deem you as peculiar. I bestow upon you the mentality of my intelligence and my wisdom and my understanding. And I deem you worthy to continue in my army, army and be the remnant of those that war in the spirit for my cause. My righteous cause. My righteous will. If you stray from the mandate that I've given, it will be your own downfall. I, the Lord, will have nothing to do with that. And the gates of hell will have jurisdiction over your life. And that will be the fruit of your doings, not mine's. My responsibility is to love you but the only protection in this is when you realize that your responsibility is to love me. <laughs>